I don't have friends. I got family. Family, family. Family. You can have any brew you want, as long as it's a Corona. Family, family. Family. This just went from Mission Impossible to Mission and Freaking Sanity. The movies. Vroom, vroom. It's week five of Fast Fridays, and it's uh, me, Andrew Jones, your family. With me, as always. Johnny Ellis. Hello. Oh, what's that? Is that a sound of someone driving a car? That's right. We've got a guest this week. Joining our family is Bradley Porter. Welcome. Oh, yeah, I'm actually driving a car. <laughs> it's, it's like genuine Fast and Furious going on right now. Yeah, although I'm stuck in traffic on the M4, so. <laughs> I mean, that's just cinematic. Hit the nose. Yeah. <laughs> and this week we're talking about Fast Five, or as they, for some reason, titled it in the UK for a period of time, Fast and Furious Five Rio Heist. I did wonder, I thought that there was a Rio heist somewhere in the title at one point. You could do a whole podcast just <laughs> on the titling of these films. Yeah. This one, once again, it's uh, directed by Justin Lin and written by Chris Morgan. It's the uh, power couple that we all know and love. <laughs> I mean, what what other ones did they do? They came from Fast and Furious. Yeah. That was the but key what? one. And, yep, they both did uh, Tokyo Drift as well. I just want to make sure. Uh, Chris Morgan's written every one of them, hasn't he, since Tokyo Drift? Or did he bail out after Seven? I think he bailed out at some point. I know he's not really that involved with... He's kind of involved with the Fast Saga. But it's not just him this time. No, fair enough. I just figured um, Vin Diesel took over at some point. (laughs) And it's just his his thing. I do think it's very actor-led. Yeah. Oh, are you saying that uh, we should go back to briefly our uh, run of uh, David Ortiz Universal Executive's uh, Twitter thread on Fast and Furious? Yes. Where, uh, Bradley, it's each week, week we've been uh, running down, uh, David Ortiz did a Twitter thread about the Fast and Furious franchise from Tokyo Drift onwards. And we've been updating the listener for each relevant part. Okay. So uh, here, we- this is leading up. We've just finished Fast and Furious and uh, Vin Diesel was so sure it would be setting up the Avengers <laughs> franchise. Dwayne Johnson, a- AJA, this is how he's written it here, The Rock, <laughs> was a bonus because he had just done Tooth Fairy and it didn't work. But Dwayne came to play on Fast and Furious 5. What most don't know is how Vin's Facebook became a phenomenon on so many levels. Vin showed Dwayne how he would post on Facebook at La Concha Hotel in Puerto Rico in 2010. It's partially why Vin said Facebook and Instagram owe him $1 billion on Nano years ago. Similar to fans clamouring for Michelle's return, Vin would engage them on casting Dwayne, Statham, Charlie's, etc. The day we tested Eva Mendes and the Dwayne Johnson scene in Fast and Furious 5, the crowd's roar was unlike anything. Imagine when we heard Avengers assemble during Endgame. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the last of the Twitter thread we get from him. Wow. I mean, he ends up on a cliffhanger. Do you remember Endgame? That's what it was for Fast 5. I mean, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I completely lost that thread. Um, well, Diesel, you can find it on Twitter. Vin Diesel, man, he's an enigma, isn't he? <laughs> he's a fascinating man. I was listening to his uh, his song today in anticipation. For which the one? <laughs> the, this pop song he released during quarantine. Uh, which one? There are two. Oh. I yeah, know, I, 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 the one that premiered on the Kelly Clarkson show where all the weird <laughs> like of people do. were dancing. That yeah. is great. When we recorded the, was it the first episode? It was the first uh, Fast and Furious episode. I, uh, I, uh, told yeah. me about. There is a second Vin Diesel song. It oh, popped okay. up on his Spotify. It's not, it's not as good. I, I think it, it is just as good, and I enjoy both of them immensely. It I've not listened someone, to it as much. It was when someone took the clip of the end of another round and put the music from that Vin Diesel song on it and I sat there and said this is a good song where have I heard this before and it took me forever to figure out that it's the banger by Vin I, look I think if you put anything to Mads Milkers and dancing it's gonna feel good yeah anyway. it's the new version of that uh, Oscar Isaac ex machina clip yes <laughs> or Theresa May dancing at the, uh, the conservative <laughs> convention <laughs> Uh, I saw someone uh, recut the the trailer for um, Fate, no, F- for Nine. F9 the Fast Saga. Yeah, um, with uh, with 
his song. What is his song called again? I keep forgetting. Feel like I do. It's feel like I do. And there's, there's no uh, way there's not a Vin Diesel song on the soundtrack for Fast Nine at this point. Well, as 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 I talked about, uh, when Hitch came out, that was around the same time as uh, Will Smith's song Switch came out, and yet <laughs> neither of them are connected to each other. Switch and it could be one of those Hitch, situations. <laughs> no, exactly. But they were they were around the same time. It's like, well, you could have you could have put them both together and had synchronicity here. So I, I've got a feeling that Vin might not do that as well. Oh, well. I mean, yeah, you're right, by the way. I just very dangerously checked, looked on my phone while I was stuck in traffic. Chris Morgan is not writing Nine. It's the first one he hasn't written. He wrote Hobbs and Shaw, but he is, ah. hasn't even got a story by credit on Nine. Oh, wow. Dangerous. He's just writing Hobbs and Shaw too. Thank goodness for that. I love we've yeah. got someone driving while we're doing this podcast. It's... <laughs> It's just perfect. You get someone outdoors. I mean, that's yeah. what I've not Yeah, been that too, yeah. I know. Like, I've been at the office since November, so I kind of haven't felt like... I think that's probably why I'm more anxious for cinemas to open this time than I was before, because yeah. the rest of my life feels like it's back to normal. Yeah. And that's missing. Whereas before, I didn't really give a shit, because it's not like new movies were coming out, so I could happily watch them at home. But everything else was different. But yeah, so very excited about that. Very excited to watch them go to space. Yeah. I knew about that for fucking ages. And everyone was like, oh, it's not in the trailer. So your friend must have been lying to you. I'm like, no. Multiple people who worked on this film told me that Ludacris was in his spacesuit going to space. <laughs> I mean, it technically it was in the first trailer because you do see them driving on that big, long highway thing. Well, the runway yeah, thing. Yeah, and there's sure, a, car, there's a plane going really high up really quickly. And you're like, they, mm. didn't make it, they didn't make it explicit. No, they kept it subtle. So if you knew, you knew. Yeah, I knew. But I was like, I want people to believe me. It's like how I knew. I believed you. It's like how I knew that Edgar Wright was directing No Time to Die, as it's now called, for ages. But because the deal wasn't officially done, everyone thought I was lying. They're like, no, it was this close. Like, yeah. Well, after Danny Boyle, Edgar Wright was all but signed, and then it all fell apart at the last oh, minute. Man. Can you imagine an Edgar Wright Bond film? No. Well, I, I just think Edgar Wright is now on that list with Nolan and a few other people, because Nolan was legit in talks to do it at one point. It never got very far. But I do think there's this whole list of people who are like, yeah, we want to do it, but we want to do it when it's the new Bond. Right. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's where it fell apart with Edgar Wright, because after Danny Boyle dropped out, they contemplated, well, why don't we just start again mm. and not do another Daniel Craig one? So Edgar Wright got very involved being like, yeah, OK. And then, of course, Daniel Craig was like, no, no, I really want to do it. So I think when they come back with the next Bond, you're going to have. A, you know, they're really going to take out the guns and go, right, OK, let's make this a director led thing, you know. Anyway, we'll see. I wonder when we'll get the announcement of the next Bond, because I have a feeling that they've probably already got it in the bag, but they're just waiting until after No I Time to Die. I don't, I don't think so. No? I, no, I mean, look at the history of all these things. They're not going to rush. Yeah. Rush. I think it'll be at least a year after No Time to Die before they announce anything. Oh. And the problem is they're not going to pick someone now who in the next year or two could suddenly become really famous for something else, because that's not what they want. No. Yeah. Everyone always says, oh, it's going to be a famous person, famous person. It's not, it's not. It's never famous. Daniel Craig was still that guy from Layer Cake to only a certain amount of people at that point. He wasn't even that famous. Mm. You, know? you know, Piers Brosnan was Remington Steel. <laughs> It'll be the equivalent. It'll be someone at best, like, a, 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 I'm pretty certain they're going to go with a black bond. That'd be good. I, I just feel like they can skirt their way around the we don't want a female Bond issue very successfully because, you know, just it's still James Bond. But they, they can't avoid the why is he always white question. So it's time so for it, Colin Salmon to finally get his due. So, but it's not, it's not going to be someone as famous as Riz Ahmed, but it'll be someone like Arinze Kenne or Naban Rizwan or someone like that. Someone, Rizwan, I Rizwan, I would That would be an interesting one. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It'll be someone at that level of fame where it's like, oh, it's that guy who I've seen in those things. Mm. But who isn't, it's not going to be the hunky juke from Bridgerton because he's already that thing. 
yeah, yeah. It's it's got to be someone you don't have an immediate connection with for anything else because you want the first connection you have to be Bond because that's the, yeah. how the brand works. It's, it's why they don't tend to ever cast anyone famous for Superman for that same reason. Well, whoever it is, they'll make their debut on uh, Fast and Furious Ten in a little cameo. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what was it like? I just all I want now is the uh, I want Bob Odenkirk to pop up in John Wick Four. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's what I want. There's no way that those films are not set in the same universe. <laughs> that would be delightful. I, I don't see how that doesn't happen. Um, when you say those films, you are talking about Little Women. Nobody in. <laughs> yeah. Little Women and John Wick. What they haven't told you is that Amy from Little Women grows up to be Natasha's sister in Black Widow through mind writing. <laughs> These like, cinematic uh, universes, that's what it's yeah, all about. Yeah, Sony worked out another deal with Marvel, Spider-Man and Amy from Little Women. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be bitterly disappointed when I see that now. <laughs> when I go see uh, Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Hayley Steinfeld is playing Kate, obviously Kate Bishop in Hawkeye, but is clearly Matty from... This is what happened between... True Grit and the epilogue of True Grit. <laughs> We've already established that time travel exists and she's good with a bow and arrow. So <laughs> she was trained by the Indian, the Native Americans. Oh, God. Um, fast and Furious 5. <laughs> oh, Fast 5? Yeah, Fast hey, do you remember 5. Where we were at the end of Fast 4. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Because you said you were surprised that um... where we were. I was in Bristol. <laughs> I just been to. A, I was managing the cinema in Bristol, and we had one of our, you know, uh, you know as you you test the print back because yeah. it was back still prints back then. We tested, we tested the print, and I was so excited for number four hmm. because it brought them all back together again, and it was such a steamy pile of shit. <laughs> I was so angry, and then there was these, the whole thing. There was a girl I'd been sleeping with at work, and she was there, and her ex-boyfriend was at the screen. It was all very awkward. It was a bit of a weird night anyway. So anyway, by the time Fast Five came out, I was kind of like, ugh, I can't be bothered. But me and my old housemate always liked to watch dumb action movies together, and they had a digital, back when digital screenings of films were still a novelty, sure. digital screening, 11 a.m. on a Friday, and we're like, let's go. And it was like, fuck me, this is it. This is cinema. <laughs> cinema that leads immediately off of the end of Fast and Furious, we have to say. Yeah, 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 exactly. Dom, so Dom they... has just been, a, you know, sent to prison. He's on a bus going to prison. Yeah, basically proof that you can polish a turd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, there's a good action sequence, this, this whole... It's a nice thing, you get, you know, so it's... Oh, uh, it's a real announcement, wasn't it? It was like, we're not fucking around. Yeah. You know, we're here to play. Because I went to see it again. I took my parents. Because my parents liked the first couple, uh, first one anyway. They never watched Tokyo Drift. And they were like, oh, we haven't watched these. They said, trust me, especially my mum, you're going to like this. Mm. And I took them to see it. And that opening scene, there was like, my dad turned around and he was like, this is good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so there's four cars and they flip the prison bus. Yeah. Real like, stunt work as well. Like real cars. five times over flip it. And then like no one survived. Happily. And then Perd Happily pops up. <laughs> As a newscaster and confirms there's no fatalities on this multiple flip completely destroying bus. What was it I watched the other day with Perd Happily? It might have been nobody, actually. Or, no, I think it was without remorse. It was something really serious. And Perd Happily turned up as like a political correspondent on the news. <laughs> It's weird. He, he, he does that a bunch of times before Parks and Rec. I don't know, you really think at this point like, they must be doing it. They must the... be doing it in on the joke now. But it's when it pops up in a really serious film where the film doesn't have a sense of humour. You're like, do you know what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, yeah, without remorse. Jeez, <laughs> how does... Oh, blimey. Yeah, was it yeah you've, got, you've got to know. It was without remorse, you're right. I mean, it was a terrible movie, but that's all I remember it. That and... Why keep casting Guy Pierce as the ship? He's obviously going to be the ship because it's Guy Pierce. <laughs> what? No. I'm sure Kate Winslet's going to have a nice relationship with him at the moment on TV. 
I don't mean like that. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but then again, he was the shit with her in uh, Mildred Pierce as well. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, he was the shit when we did Mary Queen of Scots. He's always the shit. He's he was very nice to Vin Diesel, of course, on Bloodshot. Not at all the bad guy. Maybe he's going to pop up as the shit in Fast 11. Maybe he's the guy who, was per- who we never saw in Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, I mean, we only heard a voice. And well, you know fair, how Guy Pierce is with accents. We all know who actually filmed that cameo, right? And then they cut it. No. Do, we, I mean, I, do I know this? Are, are, are we, are we talking? This? I think. I mean, I heard rumor about one person. Keanu Reeves. I love him. Yes, okay. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow! Oh. I think. I think they either decided against it being Keanu Reeves, or they just wanted to hold it for a next film. I was like, I hold it for the next film just in case thing, because you know you don't want to overload people after you've had. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to blow your load with Keanu Reeves at the end, and then have him get cancelled for something all over a three minute, and then you've got to recast everything because of a three minute cameo. Or you don't want to set up a sequel that might never happen, and you're like, well, we got Ed Norton; he's basically playing James Cameron in this moment, but we're not going to yeah. actually use him. Hey, Ed Norton in Knives Out Two makes me so happy. <laughs> Janelle yeah, he's playing, he's playing his role from Alita Battle Angel in that, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and um, Janelle Monet. I mean, what? Anyway, sorry, I really go off on tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we were talking about casting, though, uh, let's talk about the casting of uh, the big uh, villain in um, Fast Five. Yes, you're right. Yeah, we open up to uh, uh, Christ the Redeemer. That's what we were talking about. <laughs> they yeah, they cast say, Christ the Redeemer itself. I mean, yeah, what I'm saying, if you're talking about the villain, you're talking about what's his name? Joaquin Del Nero or something Del like Del that. Yeah. yeah, let's say, because The Rock is more of an antagonist. He's not yeah. a villain. Uh, he, he's nearly family. He's yeah. Two hours away percent. from him being family. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, no, I was talking uh, Joaquin de Almeida. Um, and oddly, Almeida, you know, he features in 24, in day three. Yeah. In the That's first the half. Best day. Day yes, the best day. Yes, the best. The best of all the days. It's a Wednesday. Um, Actually, no. I like Day Fridays. five was really fucking good, and then it went off a cliff. Oh yeah, day five was amazing. Day seven was quite fun. And day five was the, I, to be fair. I got I stopped, I stopped watching after season six because day five was off a tangent. Sorry. King <laughs> so, is in Fast Five. Was Gal fault. Gadot in number four? I can't remember because I hate yes. that film. Yeah, so Gadot is okay. in number four. Yeah. And those two guys who never speak English were they from four as well? Uh, they're from Los Bandoleros, and they briefly appear in four. What's yeah. Los Bandoleros? That's Vin Diesel's <laughs> short film, which is a prequel to Fast and Furious, which is oh, I just... I have seen that. It's on the uh, Blu-ray. It is uh, 17 minutes long before credits, and oh, it basically is five watch. scenes of him with some actors. I will watch it. I will watch it. I've got, I've got the whole... I've got all of them, so I will watch it. Well, there you go. You watch it and go, hmm, how come I can't get, you know, my short films to be funded and starring as many good actors as this? Dude, I've got, I've my got scripts money are and I still can't get a producer to actually do the fucking work. So, uh... <laughs> so I've got 21 grand. Just fucking come and do the work. You'll be paid. God. Anyway. <laughs> yes, we all have problems with our short films that got funded. Sorry, let's keep going because I'm down to 10%. And I can, plug oh. it into the, I can plug it into my charging thing, but then you'll have to torture me with hands free and you won't hear me very well. Right. So... Uh, right, fast five. Um, so what, they're in what, Rio. What, on your six pages of notes. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I'm, I, we're in Rio. Right. Right. It's uh, Brian and me are hanging out. Dom's gone missing. They go to the favelas. They're confronted with guns. But they're also confronted with Vince is back. Remember Vince? Oh, yeah. Yeah. With his arm ties in the uh, first film. Yeah. Yeah. And that then was he great. disappears. It's my partner, who really never wants to watch all these movies, I made her watch the first one and then the fifth one. Because I actually thought, because of the whole Vince thing, it's quite easy to go from one to five. Yeah, it's a clean jump. You don't Damn it, why didn't we do that? <laughs> when you don't need to. Really, weirdly, Tokyo Drift is... If you talk about how, like, Fire Walk With Me is the legend to understanding Twin Peaks The Return, Tokyo Drift is kind of like the legend to the Fast and the Furious series. Yeah. Like, it's the thing you need to break the code. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Mm. Uh, what we find here, of course, is that uh, we see that Vince has got a, a, a wife and child in Rio. He's now kind of like a king of Rio crime. And mm-hmm. Mia feels a bit sick. Hmm, what does that mean? Oh, she's just having an off day, right? Oh, she doesn't like children. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> she's allergic. But don't worry, there's a job. They're going to pull a job. They're going to pull a job in Rio. Oh, yeah. I realise yep. I've gone the wrong way down the M25. What fucking idiot. <laughs> 
<laughs> Exclusive clip from Fast and Furious 9. <laughs> yeah. This is Helen Mirren. <laughs> Thank you. I've gone the wrong way down the M25. <laughs> so train heist. Yep. Yep. We're, we're, we're dealing with cars, but cars and train. I mean, if, if we're ranking action scenes in, in Fast Five, I think I might actually put the train heist over the safe oh. uh, chase at the end. I concur. Yeah. The train heist really sets everything up perfectly and is exciting and thrilling and uh, terrifying at times. And just beautifully blocked. Again, I couldn't believe the same guy that made the abomination that was four made this at the time. Because the action is so clean and so practical heavy. It's wonderfully coherent. Mm. Yeah, it's so, so they're grabbing a bunch of cars on a train which seem to have been impounded by some guys with badges. Who could yep. label? Badge guys. But, uh, but Mia wants the GT40. Yeah. And everyone else is like, mm, we, well, no, we want that car. But Vin's pretty insistent that, uh, He's hey, psychic. that's the car. <laughs> But, but go and meet us somewhere else. Don't follow everyone else. So she drives off differently and they start shooting because uh, there's something in that car they like. The steering wheel, right? The, the, the radio. Could be the, could be the radio. We, 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 we just don't know. <laughs> what we do know, though, is uh, there's a rickety car that pulls uh, cars from the train. That's, That's so really cool. Yeah, I just love the how fast it is. It's like a whiplash kind of... <laughs> Yeah, and how furious it is, because that yes. car literally gets straight out of Mad Max. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, did, did you imagine driving a car that fast on the side of a train, pulling cars out, and then ramping them off onto yeah. the ground? That's just too oh, much. It's, it's, it's do a you guys, of... when you do this podcast, do the thing where you have to remind yourself every episode that this all started with them jacking DVD players out the back <laughs> of the box? Um, we, 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 we mentioned that in the first one. We mentioned this is how it starts, but we've never got. Never that as, got. We we, like, we know it's there, but we don't want to keep bringing it back. We want to enjoy no, each episode. I feel like it's one of those things you have to do. It's like a control. Like you, have to, <laughs> you have to do it every time. Center you yourself. Like, yeah, center it and go. These guys. Like when I watched the trailer for the new one, and he has a super secret terrorist brother played by John Cena <laughs> that people yeah. seem to know about. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have to. All the while they're doing magnet planes and going to space. I'm like. They're, car, they're, they're, they're truck jackers. It would, it would be good to hear one of them turn to the other and go, remember when we just used to steal DVD plants? Yeah, I really hope they You're do You're showing a deli, point. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got sandwich, crusts off a sandwich for me. It's yeah. franchise now, I, I but really we've just keep, never seen it. <laughs> I really keep waiting for the bit where you realise that between movies, Dom is actually Xander Cage. <laughs> And like the two things are happening, and Zander I mean, Cage is managing the sandwich shop when he's in Fast and Furious. <laughs> I mean, that's that's. Well, there's something going on there. That's pretty perfect. Like I think that's Cage, what Ice Cube yeah. was doing during Triple X Three until he got the call. That's it. Yeah, Ice Cube <laughs> manages the sandwich shop, <laughs> and then goes out to you know Europe to shoot out Tony. Why have we not got Triple X Four yet? You know. <laughs> I mean, between trying to get F9 going and also the album, Vin Diesel has been quite busy. I mean, like we had loads of time while they were off doing Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> I mean, Bloodshot was terrible. Mm. I like Bloodshot. I, I watched it a lot. You have really bad taste. We've been through this over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> it hurts every time you say it, but I still laugh because it's all I can do through the pain. <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm always astounded. Like, if I think a film is good, you think it's terrible, and then vice versa. There's, also, there's, the, there's the odd moment where we meet in the middle. But am I right in thinking you thought that Mary Poppins Returns was a good film? I love Mary Poppins Returns. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck Poppins. is wrong with you? I enjoy... You're someone, who, you're someone who likes musicals, and you can't appreciate how bad of a musical that is. But I... Lin-Manuel Miranda's in it. It's a nice, yeah, it's a I know, comedy. and I, he has allowed it, but that's it. That's he only gets one strike. <laughs> I'm really worried that he's doing a crab in Little Mermaid for that same awful, awful director. <laughs> no, the Little Mermaid's going to be awful. There's, there's it's no. Just gonna, it's just going to look like a fucking school play. 
Yeah. <laughs> because all he does is shoot a fucking cardboard set square on. <laughs> I'm not saying that Rob Marshall is the greatest director look of all time. Look at how cheap his, look, his Pirates of the Caribbean film was, and that's when they spent money on those films. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the worst one. He's done like one good sequence in all his films. Two, two. I will give you the. I will also give you the. What do you call it? Uh, cover is not the book. The cover is not the book. So open it. Which I'll is a very good a sequence. Book. And I will give him the one, I can't remember the name, the one where Christine Boranski is using Richard Gere like a puppet in Chicago. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, getting, yeah. We're not getting triple X4 yet. <laughs> where are we at on the train heist? Answer me this. I've never understood. I've watched Fast Five about 20 times. Yeah. Not, no exaggeration. It's a masterpiece. Sure. How does he get out of the chains when you know, they jumped into the water? Okay, right. So, by working down and then so they, they get on a car, they go, they're going over a cliff and they jump off the car after yeah. they've avoided a bridge thing, after he's thrown someone into a bridge suspension and killed them. <laughs> and then they get caught up immediately and they're chained up by Joaquin and he threatens Mia, who isn't there. And that gets Vin angry. And for some reason, that makes him so angry he can rip through these chains that he's been chained. Is that what he does? He just rips through them. It's, it's the power of uh, brotherly defensiveness. <laughs> How fucking stupid. Like Paul I, 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 look, really in the first things, one, it? in the first one, he's kind of just a normal human being when it comes to fighting, <laughs> and in this one, he is going to be punched and punched the rock through walls. And now John and this, Stennis is this brother. is this is the uh, this is the transitional period to when he becomes the Hulk. <laughs> I, the thing is, it's just I feel like Paul Walker again was like a control for Vin Diesel, like he centered him and grounded it ever so slightly. Yeah, they, they were some runs. kind of real world concern, and then he died. <laughs> And we got nuclears on <laughs> underneath the ice, and the rock literally sort of diverting a nuclear warhead with his bare hands. And Tyrese was, you know, pimping out his album and getting people angry about it. Tyrese is just always hungry. <laughs> no, that's Ham, because he's he stopped smoking. Oh, that's right. But Tyrese is also really hungry. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. Hobbs and Shaw was just so much better than Fate of the Furious. <laughs> <coughs> um, we'll get to both of those and see if uh, either of them hold up. Oh no, Hobbs and Shaw is fucking great. I could watch a million of those. <laughs> but yeah, you. so um, so they how? So he, he rips through his chains. <laughs> he literally gets so angry he rips through his chains, punches the guy, and then Brian manages to put his legs around the guy's neck so they can do double team him. And then we cut away <laughs> immediately so he doesn't see them. Double team. Nice. I assume they do double team. You know, that's that's them. They Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh goodness! Um, That's family. I'm thinking of Juice Bigelow, you're here, Gigolo here. Oh, <laughs> always. Um, so then they get back to Mia, right? Yeah. Well, they yeah they go to, but they go to the hide that she's hiding out in. She's got a pipe on her. A stop. Them. Yeah. And uh, Vin grabs well. Dom grabs the pipe because uh, just like a Toretto. <laughs> Because she's so family that she's doing the thing that he would do, which is, you know, grab something and beat someone's head in your head. Yes. <laughs> so stupid. She's pregnant. Right? I, I love it, though. This. I love she's it. Pregnant. What? That's crazy. She can't be pregnant while she's ill. That's not good. No, that's, that's well, terrible. That's how you know that they're not doing incest, because Vin Diesel can't get it up for women. <laughs> <laughs> I'd know. If you watch Los Bandoleros, he does try. Try. He's, he's driving. Michelle Rodriguez is on top of him. It's a C. I mean, if they suddenly went incesty in these films, it wouldn't surprise me. Well, they're all family, so. They exactly. are all family. Family. <laughs> Hey, but where's Vince? Everyone else is here, but where's Vince been? He's traitoring. Ah. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't know because the plane's going to land, and who comes into Rio sweaty, angry, swearing? The rock. The only Pops. person, Pops. although to be fair, the only thing more suspicious than that guy playing Vince is if Guy Pearce played Vince. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. If Danny Houston was playing Vince, that's also a bit of a... Ah, because Danny Houston could sometimes just be a bro. <laughs> yeah, but then, like, two, two sequels in, he'll suddenly go like, oh, finally, here's why I signed but up. But Guy to... Pearce has been the shit for about ten years now. <laughs> I think more than ten years. I feel like, you know... The mid noughties was the time when he started to chew a bit of scenery. Guy Pearce is just one of those guys where you just feel like we got it wrong. You know? Like, you, 
they trick you into thinking they're a really good actor when really they're just a really campy, hammy, fart piece of okay actor. I love it. I love him so much. I, I know, it. but they, they do. There was someone else recently I was talking to a friend about. It's like they trick you into thinking they're a good actor because they got lucky in one particular part that fit them so well. Christoph Waltz, that was it. I was thinking you were going to say Bakar Abdi. No, that's clean. He was good in good time. but Very true, he is. But yeah, it's Christoph Waltz. And like, he's very good at doing Tarantino. He's not very good at doing anything else. Uh, he's <laughs> really funny in Horrible Bosses too. I don't even remember. No, no one does. I remember he was in the Green Hornet, wasn't he? He certainly was. And he was in Spectre when he was like, Daddy didn't like me. He liked you more than me, so I'm going to destroy the world. He certainly was. <laughs> God, what an awful piece of shit that <laughs> film was. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, Luke Hobbs arrives and gets the one, the, probably the best F-bomb in the whole franchise. Do you, do you remember the F-bomb? Isn't it get the fuck out of my way? Stay the fuck out of Stay my way. Stay the fuck out of my way. Oh. And also he warns people, don't ever let them get near a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, and then Chris Hemsworth's wife is just there, inexplicably falling in love with Dom on first sight. I mean, aren't we all? Oh, yeah, come, well, this isn't first. I this don't is know. Third, That's one of the, I could buy a lot of random books. It's like The Shield. Have you guys watched The Shield? Uh, of course. Oh, you, okay. you have, or you haven't? I have, he hasn't. So Okay, hey. it's not really a spoiler to say that for some reason throughout the first five seasons of that show especially because then it gets too plot heavy to really indulge in these things women seem to look at Vic Mackey Michael Chiklis and just get like jelly at the knees <laughs> and, like it's some the thing about him you know yeah but I just I can't buy it it's the same thing with Vin Diesel I just can't buy it and I can buy a lot of shit in these films but I can't be- believe that women are instantly attracted to Vin Diesel or Michael Chiklis Maybe with time. Yeah, if you get to know them as a person. Yeah, but as someone so delightfully put it, Michael Chickless is like when you order Bruce Willis off Wish.com. <laughs> and it's but that he, kind of... Here you're talking about Elena. Yeah, but, Elena, but also saying Vin Diesel Transport. looks like you've ordered The Rock off Wish.com. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched Saving Private Ryan and and Boiler Room again the other day, and then I actually went and watched his short that he made, the one that went into Cam. Mm. And I was like, mate, I really wish you would go back to just, and like, find me guilty as well, just like, being an actor. It, I think I think the same about The Rock as well, actually. I was going to like, say, Dwayne kind of, yeah, post-Southland Tales, he's really been scared well, of doing that kind yeah, of stuff. He did Pain and Gain, obviously, which was great. Shit, that's true. But I do think The Rock will still do it again. I don't think Vin Diesel ever will. He's too deluded. <laughs> Unless The Rock runs for president. I, mean, um, I don't you know. You never know. Maybe Vin will finally do a musical based on Although his that's own That's going to happen. He's going to do Guys and Dolls. <laughs> he was attached to it at one point. What? Yeah, it was going to happen. I'd oh watch. God. I'd watch. Yep. Yep. He, he's going to do it. Um, Love just hope if they do it, they update it. And don't pull a West Side Story and just keep it looking like an old-fashioned out of touch. I mean, yeah, I'm looking forward to West Side Story, bit. don't get me wrong, but like In the Heights is going to fucking wedge in it. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. And, and the, yeah, that In the Heights comes out uh, in a, in next, Heights next is, week, according to when we're releasing this episode. Well, I think, yeah, well, yeah, they're going to do a, um, obviously, I, I think it's going to be one of those three City World Unlimited screens they're talking about, but I think like, In the Heights cost a third as much as West Side Story. is going to make three times as much money and get the Best Picture nomination. And West Side Story is going to be there with its dick in its hand. But Spielberg will somehow shoot, complete and finish his autobiographical one that will come out at the same time. It'll be much better and it will wipe away the stink. <laughs> Actually, I think that West Side Story will be good. But it's written by Tony Kushner. It's going to be great. It's just not going to make money. Anyway, off topic. Vin Diesel- <laughs> anyway, Dwayne's finally into the movie. <laughs> Does anyone believe? I know they all have these clauses in their contracts that say that none of them could win a fight. But does anyone believe that anyone could beat The Rock or not beat The Rock? Do you know what I mean? Like anyone well, believe I mean, it would be a draw it, between John Cena Diesel might be able to. He might be. And, and, be fair, and Vin Diesel's got his DNA in it. Apparently, I actually so. believe that Jason Statham could because he's a sneaky shit. But <laughs> Vin Diesel just looks so small next to The Rock. <laughs> What do you mean? There's that scene in Fast and Furious 6 we'll get to where they look exactly the same height. 
Yeah, but that's CGI. They're staring right at each other. It's a, it's that's a beautiful like piece of... That's Juliana Margulies and Pominden... What's that? Not Pominden Magra. What's that? Archie and Javi in uh, The Good Wife. When they're yeah, best of friends. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really hope that they put patch whatever differences they have aside just so The Rock can come back into the main franchise one more time before it ends. You know, they're doing two more, aren't they? They're doing 11. Are they going up to 11? Yeah, I love that interview with Justin Lin where someone said, oh, I thought it was 10. They went, it was, but then we thought, well, why not go to 11? <laughs> <laughs> It's like Michael Bay with Transformers. I'm, I, I'm direct, this is the last one I direct. I did another one. <laughs> I believe this. I know we're not talking about that franchise, but like the, the Transformers movie was like, I was like, where did this come from? This is great. Clean action. The humour works. Like, why did we sit through two shit films? He got it right, and then you got two that were even worse. I don't get it. Um, Cogsman. What? We we stand Cogsman and uh, his uh, friendship with uh, Anthony Hopkins oh, yeah, in the fifth one. To be fair. And there was that brilliant bit in the fourth bit where Stanley Tucci just points at an, um, a, a whiteboard and just shouts math or something. It was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tucci is going to give you everything he's got, Tucci's even great. if he's just playing, you know, alcoholic Merlin in the opening sequence of the fifth one for no reason whatsoever. I, don't know. I really hope that. Six Underground was so bad, and I love Michael Bay so much. I really that was that you know, weird. A return weird. to form. Well, it's furthering that whole Netflix where filmmakers go to make their worst movies thing. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough that it's Dominant. a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like Gareth Evans, Duncan, Duncan Jones, Jones. Um, Michael Bay. For my money, Alfonso Cuaron. Um, sure, I agree. Like, there's a few others as well. Absolutely. Anyway, sorry. Where are we? Hobbs is there. <laughs> just told him to stay the fuck out of his way. Then he wants a, a specific police officer, Elena, to be his translator as opposed to anyone that they've signed up for. Because three percent. Come on, guys. All right, they're going to strip this car to find out what's in the car. And that's when Vince returns. Where's he been? Mm. Suck it's off been. He's <laughs> just been hiding out. Sure, sure. Now we finally meet Reyes properly. We've had mm. him, you know, be a bit of a, a mean bastard. I bet The Rock has a huge penis. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just can't imagine. It's like a Samoan arm. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> tattooed. Is it tattooed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely tattooed. Probably with Vin Diesel's face on it to say this is bigger than you. <laughs> That's probably what happened. They probably walked into each other in the shower and then Vin Diesel just got the huff. One of the most disappointing things is watching five seasons of Ballers and not seeing a single... I mean, I think you got, like, one top of the arse shot, but nothing you much more. Than... You don't need to see it. You just know. Yeah, but you kind of, like, sometimes you want photographic evidence. I mean, Christine Baranski and The Rock. Best big dick energy. No one else can top it. <laughs> now, there's your musical. Oh, my God. Wouldn't you just... Oh, God, wouldn't you love that? <laughs> Imagine if they did, like, nine and a half weeks of the musical oh, with The fuck. Rock and Christine Baranski. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> come on. <laughs> They'll be having to wipe down the screens, not just for possibility of COVID, but, you know, other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, fuck it. If Fred Wood was alive, he would love it. Two percent. Come on. I mean, I can always try plugging it into my thing, but you won't hear me as well. That's the thing. That's the only problem. <laughs> anyway, Reyes has the favelas. He gives, he's the guy who gives, as opposed to uses violence. That's how his criminal enterprise works. Okay. I was waiting right. for Johnny to say. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Anyway. Right, so uh, yeah, so we've got to we've got to meet Elena. She's going to be part of the franchise. Her thing is, her husband was killed by Reyes's guys in the favelas. He, she was a police officer, so uh, he was a police officer. Now she's signed up to be a police officer as well. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Wow, that was loud. I think he just crashed. <laughs> oh no! Is that a problem? <laughs> 
I think he was too, he was going too fast and too furious. Yeah, he went too far, too furious. He went hands free. Yeah. Anyway, he'll, finally, he'll finally, find, find out what was a uh, thing because they find a touch screen in the car. This yeah. Is 2006. Oh. Hey, can you guys hear me? Or am I, do I sound awful? Well, you sound kind of weird and crazy. And well, that's it. Is, is this or nothing? <laughs> is this or nothing? Because my battery has died. Fair enough. Really, so, do you want to plug something real quick? Do I want to what? Do you want to plug things? And then we'll thank you for joining well, us. It's, then? it's plugged into my car. <laughs> it's just you can't. It's just you can't hear me because my hands free is so shit. Um, so I feel really bad, but it's probably going to be awful for your listeners. So, um, tell you what, I'll just be quiet for five minutes, let it charge a little bit, and then I'll rejoin. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Do you want to mute yourself? Because we can hear, like... I, 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 I'm, about, I'm trying to. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We don't want it to crash while he's driving doing this. <laughs> <laughs> sorry right um the screen <laughs> yes so it's 26 2006 technology remember because this is yep. mid days maybe a week or so after fast and furious which of course was set uh, five years after the fast and the furious which is set before tokyo drift yes so we've got touchscreen technology um they find out it's a microchip they were looking for which deals with uh, i think 10 or 11 stash houses in brazil in which reyes puts his money Ten million dollars a pop. Yep. It's like right. Whoa. I guess we know what we can do. Yep. They're gonna steal his money. Well, they can't steal all ten. Uh, well, 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 well. Whilst they're doing that, they finally come face to face with Luke Hobbs. Oh, all oh, right. Is they come. Where... They come for them in the favelas. See, now this is where I uh, did. You count? <clears throat> did you try and count the the punches? No, I wasn't insane. Because. <laughs> There is that thing, isn't there? Uh, Bradley mentioned it that they oh, the, this, the uh, fights have to be even, have to be equal. Yeah, is that is that real? Or because I was trying to well, count. That's certainly a part of uh, Hobbs and Shaw. It's uh, Statham and Dwayne have to be equal. All oh, right, so no, well, no one can be seen as the bigger man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which you know makes sure that uh, you know who's the bigger man at that point. Yeah, <laughs> boy, boy. <laughs> But uh, if you th- this isn't the fight, this is the run. This is the uh, rooftop. Oh, uh, right, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, where uh, Brian and Mia jump into a house. Yeah, yeah, Dom breaks a man's <laughs> neck. Luke breaks a man's neck. Yep. It's Reyes' men shooting at Hobbs' men who are shooting at uh, Tom's family. More people die in this scene than, than die in the, uh, the opening scene of the bus that crashes five times. I do have it on good authority later on that, according to Reyes, 16 men are killed by Luke Hobbs alone. Blimey. I mean, that's, you know, he's an American cowboy. Yeah. But so they're running around. At one point, Dom jumps and then uh, <laughs> Luke jumps through a building. Yeah. And Dom turns in slow motion to look at what's going on behind him. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Of course, Mia and Brian jump through a roof. Yes. She's pregnant, by the way. Don't know if you know this. She's <laughs> so so uh, Mia and Brian and their baby jump through a roof. Sure. The family jump through a roof. Yeah, the family. Yeah. Elena aims a gun at Dom. Yep. And then uh, Dom saves her from being shot by Reyes' guys. And in doing so, leaves accidentally his necklace. Oh. Oh. Now, does that count as family now? Because uh, Giselle was saved by a dom and she immediately became family. I think so, yeah. But I Especially feel like in this one, there's a bit more of a long-standing step for Elena to become family. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. It's like they care more about her character than they cared about Gal Gadot's character. Oh. Wow. Anyway, they, they, uh, they, they have finished the chase. They hug as a three-person family after Mia tells both of them that she's pregnant. And uh, what does Vin say? Uh, he's, he's part of the family. Some, he, he, he says the family. Family just got bigger. Family just got bigger, that was it. Yeah. So then Dom and Brian sit down and talk about fathers. Brian doesn't remember anything about his dad. No. Dom, Dom it's, uh, it's the famous line everyone quotes, everyone uses, like, look how bad Vin Diesel was an actor. He's like, I don't remember anything about my father. <laughs> My father used to have a barbecue every Sunday after church. If he didn't oh, go to yeah. church, he didn't get to go to the barbecue. Yeah. So he remembers everything about his father. But uh, do you know what he doesn't remember about his father? What doesn't he remember? He doesn't remember how his father dicked someone who created John Cena, I guess. 
just think like something that you know you should remember. Yeah. And bring up all the time, like, hey, do you know I've got a bigger brother or a younger brother who's like, uh, yeah, not weird, bigger. Looks exactly like the guy who's chasing us, except you know, a bit younger and uh, with a weirder haircut. <laughs> I think that's where the whole jealousy is going to come from. He's got hair and uh, Vin doesn't. That's probably it. Anyway, yeah. that, then then they say, hey, we've got one last job to do. Yeah, one last job. They and need a chameleon. We, Who's we the chameleon? Get, yeah, we get a little montage, don't we? Who's uh, our chameleon? I can't remember who who's who. Han is the chameleon. Han, he, right. he can get anywhere. And he, he needs a fast talker to talk fast. Oh, that's Tedge. Oh, oh, Rhino's just the guy. It's Roman. Oh, Roman's right. the fuck. Roman, sorry. Hey, guys, can you hear me? Can. Yeah. Right, yeah, I got 5% now, and I've also got about five minutes, so this could be perfect. I have to ask you, listen to what you think. If you had to cast anyone as Don's dad, who would it be? Jesus Christ. Jim got... Broadbent. Who? Jim Broadbent. <laughs> That's my See, answer my, for anything. My go-to is dead now, sadly, but it would have been Robert Forster, I think. Ooh, that's oh, that's That would have been perfect. Robert Forster, James Coburn, if we're going back even further. That's the problem. I just don't think we have many of those great grizzled guys left. Yeah, you want someone craggly. And I know, and we're not creating those movie stars anymore. So, I don't know. Mate, who's alive, though? Who's alive? I mean, you got here? Sam Elliott, but he doesn't really you feel the same. You don't want to go obvious. No, he doesn't feel right. You don't want to go uh, like you don't want to go kitschy like Chuck Norris. You don't want to go obvious like Stallone yeah. or um, who's the other one? Um, I don't know, there's another one like that. It's like you don't want to go obvious. Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang. Uh, again, he just he just feels just a bit cool. too cheesy. He needs to have that real like. Danny Trejo. Fuck you, Andrew James Olmos. And Harvey Keitel's a bit too old now. It's definitely that kind. Of, Anthony Hopkins, but whenever you see him, whenever it cuts to him, it's just him doing that weird dance to his yeah. camp. No, I don't. I feel, <laughs> like we're missing someone. I feel like we're missing someone really, really obvious, though. Yeah, maybe Bruce Dern. Yeah? I can watch the shit out of that. Ray Liotta doesn't look like he'd ever have children. <laughs> um, Shouldn't never have children. No, I, I, I feel like we're missing... Is Paul Sorvino still alive? He is, but he's very angry at Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, maybe that was because he tried to molest his daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, he yeah. said he'll kill him. He said he'll kill him. You know what? I would have had so much more respect for these films if instead of John Cena as his brother, it was John Leguizamo. The pest. Yeah, just imagine if the same trailer, but instead of John Cena, uh, it's John, John Leguizamo pops up and someone goes, don't you know who he is? And she goes, yeah, Dom's brother. He's like, hey, John Leguizamo. <laughs> <laughs> and the Roman would be angry because there's a second fast talker in the franchise. Yeah. Oh, mate. Oh, why did Robert Forster have to die? I mean, I ask that every time. Yeah, I just feel like we don't really have those kind of. Uh, maybe Ted Levi. No, because he's already in the franchise. It can't be Ted Levi. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's tangent. <laughs> His mother would be Jane Fonda, though, right? Like, that's wow. a given. Wait, 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 now let's get into the family part here if we want to do that. So, Mira and Dom are definitely same mother, same father. Are we sure that John Cena's character is same mother, same father? No, I'm pretty certain he's a half brother. He's a half. -y. I think I even saw an interview with someone where they said that. But that's it. I feel like you have Jane Fonda, the real Italian American dad. Like, I don't know. Robert Loggia? <laughs> Just get half the cast of The Sopranos in there and claim them as one person. Holly Walnuts! Oh, there Holly you go. Walnuts and Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, 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 I want that trailer for The Many Saints of Newark more than anything else right now. Because I need to see it. It's a need. I need to see Billy Magnuson as Holly Walnuts. I, when I saw that on the cast list, I thought, what? Wow, that's interesting. And Vera Farmiga as Livia Soprano. Alessandra Nivola as Christopher Moltisanti's dad. John Bernthal as Tony Soprano's dad. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, interesting ah, cast. I, am, I really hope it's good. I'm so excited. I've still got to start The Sopranos. I'm it's always not, a bit, uh, post, post not fade away, I'm a bit suspicious of what... Well, he didn't direct it. It's, it's, it's what's his name, Alan... 
Taylor, one of the big directors of the show, is doing it. Um, I, I don't know. I just I really want it to be good. That and the Last Jewel are probably the films I'm looking forward to the most because I need to see Ben Taylor. Affleck. Yeah, I need to see Ben Affleck in that stupid blonde wig playing a French king. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing they're going to danger's liaison with it, though, and have them all just speak American. Wait Can a second, ma- Corey Stoll is playing Uncle June. Yeah, that's right. How the f- that's, that's interesting. Genius. That yeah. is in- oh, Nick Vallelonga's in this. Yeah, okay, yeah, right, no, perfect, great. But I just sit there, Nick Vallelonga's Tony is Don's dad. No, 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 he's just, he's not got a credit to his name yet, he's just there. No, 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 he's Don's he actually- dad in the Fast oh, and Furious right. franchise. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do a Christmas song about New York. You probably find confusing? out that Nick Vallelonga is actually younger than Vin Diesel. <laughs> but h- how good is Vin Diesel at folding up pizzas? He, uh, probably very good. He probably, eats them, with, he probably eats them with his anus, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it out for Vin Diesel's eating habits now? Well, why not? Because thing. that's a perfectly acceptable way to eat things. That's how I do it. Explains a lot. Um, <laughs> on that note, I, I, on, on the night, I'm going to have to go because I'm here at my dad's and it's his birthday. But sorry, I didn't get to the end. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for fun. a period of time and making it exciting and driving, Brad. Yes, that it's definitely cool. the best Fast and the Furious film. Uh, has the best action sequence in the film. It's the. It's maybe not the funniest, but it's probably the funniest intentionally. Um, <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. You know, I feel like. Mate, just that that switch out with the safe genuinely got me. I'm so rarely surprised by things that happen in films that when I am, I'm really, really just you like appreciate. I really appreciate it. There was something else recently that did it as well. I was like, I was genuinely didn't see something coming, and I feel like when you see as many films as we do, it's really, especially when you like work in it as well. You you see these things coming a mile off, like Guy Pierce is the shit. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I've got nothing to promote um, because I have, no one watches anything I do. You I put short films on the list. Yeah, um, but no one cares. Um, okay. But, you know, watch Ted Lasso season two, July 23rd on Apple. Uh, good show, hope good season. Well, you know, you've got 12 episodes. Ooh. Mm. Nice. Um, which isn't a reveal, that's already out there, so I'm not spoiling anything. Well, I was just um, about to say you heard it here first. No, you didn't. I wouldn't say anything. Uh, you know, <coughs> I can tell you things episode? that happen. I can tell you things that happen in the trailer. There is stuff <laughs> at Christmas. There he rides a lawnmower. Um, mm. He makes a joke about an actress whose name I can't remember. There you go. <laughs> Sarah Great. Niles is in it. Have fun. Tahiba, uh, wasn't it? Sam Obasanya gives a press conference. Enjoy. Are there biscuits involved again? And can't can you say. get us some of those biscuits? I can't say. <laughs> My mother wants biscuits say. so badly. Yeah, I, I have eaten. I have eaten some Ted Lasso shortbread. Uh, are they as good I as they say? I can't shortbread. possibly say. Oh boy. <laughs> get anyway, us <laughs> take care, guys. Enjoy Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank so you for much. being part of the family. <laughs> bye 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 bye. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> we need someone to work the circuits. Yeah, that's Tej. Yep. Tej is back. Back How's his again. hair looking? Um, yeah, not as good. Short, shaved down, sad. Yeah, yeah, sad. Short, no. shaved down, sad. Oh, I yeah. should mention, of course, on my list, uh, they say family five times in this film. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, there's there's no Corona. There's brown bottled beers, even at the uh, barbecue and at the beach. They don't have it. Uh, Roman, Dom, and Luke are bald. Yes. <laughs> that's a three. It's a, it's a record. Right, yeah. <laughs> we, um... need to, we need people to all punch through the rules. <laughs> That's our two from uh, Los Bandoleros. Leo and Santos. Yep. We need someone I, who works weapons. Who I quite like, and I don't remember how they kind of exit the franchise, because I'm pretty sure they're not in it anymore. Right. Uh, well, they exit the franchise at the end of this film. Oh, was that it? Oh. Uh, and, except I think they're back for the past saga. Okay. Oh, right. Good, good. Um, Have yeah, you lost sorry. it? Yeah, they need someone to work weapons. Who do you know who works weapons well? Um, Tedge. Who works weapons well? Giselle. Giselle, sorry. Nice. Two drivers who will do anything it takes. Well, you know we've already got that. Oh, yeah, we've already got that. <laughs> yeah. That's what Brian says to the dog. Like, well, you know we already got that. That's Mia and her unborn baby, right? 
Let's purr it happily. Purr it happily. <laughs> so Romeo and John finally meet. This is a big moment. They have this. Yep. They kind of have a handshake, and then Roman's kind of tries to do a stare contest with Dom and see if he's like the alpha. Yeah. Because if you remember, Too Fast Too Furious, he was wanting to be like the Dom role. Yeah. And now they're facing up against each other, and it's like, well, Vin doesn't have time for this shit. It's a bit like a uh, Thor and um, Chris Pratt in. Uh, in oh yeah. <laughs> Where uh, they're both trying to protect. Pratt. I don't remember Chris Pratt's name in that franchise. Yeah. Is it is it Chris Pratt from the uh, church there? They have gay oh, cons- uh, gay gay conversion therapy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So is that all the crew? That's the crew they've listed. Yes. That's the crew. But um, right, they they hit the first cash house. Yeah. And they say, and uh, they got all this cash, and uh, the guy goes, "Don't you know who you're robbing from? Right. They're going to find you." Okay. And so Dom takes off his mask, and goes, "I don't care. I want you to." Yeah. And then uh, what does he do with the cash? Right. Yeah. Now this is my problem. Because um, your... <laughs> you've got six pages of notes. I sent you one text, <laughs> and it was about <laughs> this very thing because it bugged me, and I was like, "This is the thing that happens in films, and why does no one bring it up?" Right. So. <laughs> They cover it in uh, something flammable. Gasoline. Um, gasoline. Gasoline. Um, they get they get a nice Zippo lighter, you know, yeah, like it's, the, it's the a nice flick. One. Yeah. Um, and set it alight, and and they held the lighter, and then they throw the lighter onto the onto the pile of cash. And it's like, why why would you do that? Why don't you just set a um a small pile of cash a light? And then throw that cash, that lit up cash, onto the gasoline. And then, One, maybe and then fingerprints you... and DNA. They can work that back. What? But fingerprints and DNA? You never know. You never know. In, in a case that's not this case in particular, if they don't want to be found, that might okay. be a situation. Two, if you're burning money anyway, you've literally got cash to burn. You don't mind going off and buying a new lighter immediately. Or fine. I know, but it's just a waste of lighters. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Every part of life is a waste, so why don't you just enjoy it? Burn everything. You can waste oh, yeah. everything else. You can waste the cars. Of... And... <laughs> you can waste the cars and waste waste human lives, but when it comes to wasting lighters, um, they don't waste I... human lives. They kill yeah. sixteen of Reyes's men. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they're not human. So... No, no, no. I'm just saying it's not wasting; it's killing. Right. Okay. Fair enough. It's um... for a purpose. The purpose is to add credentials to your serial killer trajectory on your top job. <laughs> So now, um, <clears throat> now that they've uh, they've hit one of the ten spots, right? Well, first off, Hobbs's team is putting the uh, car back together to find out uh, what's missing. Right, and then they start running the motor. It's all good, and then they hit the touchscreen, and the touchscreen uh, says uh, exclamation mark error exclamation mark, which I believe Aero. Portuguese for error. Ah, uh, right. right, and it's like ah, oh, right, whatever was in there was what it is. Reyes gets angry about the stash house. He kills the guy who said they're going to find you. You know. And demands his money's moved to a central hub. And then this will get the family all around Rio. Yep. Watching each individual uh, stash house get their money moved. Which we do get to see, of course, Han is driving a really fucking dirty car. (laughs) It's a real, like, it is, you know, just grimy, rusty. I think the exhaust is messed up. I think there's a banana in its tailpipe. Uh, I think I mean. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, and we'll I, see where they're moving to, right? Yes. Um, but do you think they um, they're not really being very inconspicuous about watching the? Uh... No, they're right behind them in sunglasses, looking. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's it's uh, it's it's Rio. If they're not right behind someone looking cool, what are they? Are they just Christ to Redeemer? They're the only two things. People looking cool. <laughs> Christ to Redeemer, which Fair by enough. this point we've seen three times. Fair enough. Um, so now we get them planning the heist. No, no, now we find right. out where their resting place is. Where is all the money getting moved to? Oh, to a massive uh, bank vault. Oh, the police station. Yeah. Oh, Reyes' money is being held in the evidence room of the police station. Yeah. Well, look, I'm going to quote my uh, friend Roman Pierce here. Right. This just went from Mission Impossible <laughs> to Mission in Freaking Sanity. I remember that go- that quote, but I didn't remember it for this film. I thought no, it was like it's this film. Seven. It's in the trailer for this film. I love this. It's in the opening titles to every episode of this podcast. Because <laughs> this just went from Mission Impossible, which is a franchise I love, 
to Mission in Freak Insanity, which is this franchise. Which you which also is, love. Which is stating, like, hey, Tom Cruise, this is like, what if we had 12 Tom Cruises with cars? I mean, now you're talking. Two. <laughs> Oh, but and while we're doing this, right? Uh, they hit uh, Hobbs gets a hit off of a car going away from uh, the burning of the stash house, right? And uh, using uh, 2006 era satellite technology, they can find out <laughs> what that car is and if it's definitely Vin Diesel driving, and they can find out everyone in Rio where it is and where the cash houses are and everything. <laughs> yeah, because it's 2006, and we've got all that technology to enhance, enhance, enhance. It's uh, it's classic 2006 era technology. Oh Maybe yeah, 2005 because you know, we were early 2006. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so ridiculous it's wonderful I mean it's only been a couple of years since they were as uh, Brad was saying hijacking TV VCR combos and DVD players <laughs> oh my goodness um, right so now where are we right Roman's coming into the police station with a box of evidence he's going to uh, right. use his fast talking to uh, charm the woman at the evidence station but she switches out a shift and who's there instead Oh, man. Um, 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 <laughs> a man? He can't charm a man. I admit that, you know, they, they do avoid doing any kind of gay panic in this, but it does feel like that's the joke. Is, yeah. Uh, he sweet talk this girl, and now he's going to awkwardly, using Brian's old FBI credentials, try and get Yeah, him. yeah. It's like he says you're Caucasian. Yeah. You've got a tan. <laughs> I did like that line. And look, it's fun. This is fun. <laughs> this is what I like about heist film, is when you have all the bits and pieces working together. Yeah. But what's in the box? What's in the box? That's right, it's Cleopatra's Patrick's head attached to a remote control car. Yep. Here's our first remote control car of the world. Our first of how many? Oh, right, yeah, we get quite a few. We're Bigger big ones. Yeah. And uh, who's who's driving it? Well, it's only the person we love to watch driving cars. It's Tej. Tej is driving yep. a remote control car around Nevada's Lock is smashing into things because he's bad at driving. <laughs> he's bad at driving. And they find the safe, and Tej immediately knows all the details about this safe. Yeah. Why? Because that's his thing. I had a life before this. He had a life before this. That was it. Yep. We notice. We notice. Anyway, Leo and Santos, they go into the sewers. Yep. They uh, they cause the, the police station to uh, blow up with the shit. Isn't yeah. that a fun scene? Do you remember that fun scene? Yeah. There's just shit all over the place. Yep. It's uh, it's uh, yeah. Well, I watched it in 4K. Disgusting. <laughs> This is uh, disgusting. Brilliant. And then they go in as janitors and uh, pretend to clean up the place real quick and uh, go through a wall and hook up the CCTV to uh, their HQ, their heist HQ, yeah. where they find they've got four cameras around the parking structure on the other side of the wall of the evidence locker. So, yep. So they're they're trying to um to to but try they... without the cameras hitting them, right? Yes, yeah, so they've got to be fast and agile. Right. What does Dom say? O'Connor, let's get get some cars. All <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. So they, get, they finally get to they go to a street race. Indeed they do. It's like oh. just being it's like back at home. Um that's not the like line. He's home. It's like he's home. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. Oh, it's yeah. so lovely. It's home <laughs> lovely. We see you know, it's the close ups of women's asses and cars, it's that kind of thing mm. all over again. And then everyone knows him by reputation, Dom. He's like, Phew. that car would look good as a trophy. Oh, yeah. And so it's like, oh, I want your blue coupe. So it's like, okay, we're going to do a race. And we never see the race. I, no, no, no. We get the street race. It's really exciting. What, what, no, no. Wait, what? They pull right in. They've already won the blue coupe. Yep. They don't need to show a street race because they know at this point in the <laughs> franchise, we don't need to see the race. We know Dom's fast. Yeah, it's quite well done, to be it's, honest. It, it's like, a, right, you know what? This is a heist movie. Yeah. You know what you want from this franchise, but you've already had a train heist. Yeah. And you've already had, like, uh, a, a favela run heist. Yeah. You don't need to see a car heist, because you're going to see a lot of other heists. <laughs> like, we're going to heist your time, and in place of time, give you a great feel. <laughs> anyway, Giselle's just going to use the uh, blue coupe to try and do the four, four cars, the four yep. camera car thing. She almost pulls it off. Hans there watching her. What does he say? He thinks he's in love. I think I'm in love. Oh, oh, oh. I'm glad they, they quickly move away from a, a Dom and her being a potential Anything. love interest. Well, that's right, because, you know, he's got to deal with the fact that, uh, you know, Letty's dead. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, but Letty's dead. That's kind of his thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, the yeah. Tej is uh, playing with a safe, and uh, the problem is it needs a handprint from Reyes. Why don't they get him get a handprint? Well, Han and Giselle decide to go to the beach. They say, you know what, we don't care about this. <laughs> Turns out she's full of Mossad. Han used to smoke uh, two packs a day, and he supplements his habits with finger foods. Finger foods. Finger foods. So he's always eating. How are you going to get it, though? Ah, you don't send a man to do a woman's job. Oh, yeah. Giselle removes her dress and shows that she's wearing a bikini. She walks right up to him. He grabs, Re- Reyes grabs her ass and boom. Hampton. Now, did he just slap it? <laughs> or did he grab it and really go to town? On it? <laughs> asks. And Roman has a good time with that. That yeah. feels like it. That kind of feels like it's ludicrous having fun. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird because then when I, I don't know, I wonder if it was written because they do repeat that at the end as well. Yeah, yeah. I they, was... they, they get a great callback. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just gonna gonna read this uh, this this thing here from Empire Magazine from eight hours ago, which just popped on my Twitter feed. Fast Nine's insane magnet plane stunt was devised by director Justin Lin's son, aged eight or nine at the time, in a meeting filled with toy cars. What? <laughs> which <laughs> the Onion video about the five year old writer? That's that again. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> uh, right, Hobbs, so... Hobbs is Old Testament. They want to. They they they're scared of him coming back for more revenge. Right. And they never know where he is. So they meet him at a street event, and uh, you know Luke and his guys pull guns on Dom, and Dom's like, "This is Brazil." I and love everyone, that. And, and everyone pulls guns on him on them. The the slight like accent when he says it. This is this is Brazil. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. I remember everything about my father. <laughs> so then everyone just like Elena's like, yeah, this isn't worth it. So they all run away. They drive away, and uh, then we reveal that Tej was sneakily hiding under Luke Hobbs's van the entire time. Oh yeah, catching a yeah. tracker. He was just he was just doing the uh, the Robert De Niro in uh, thingy, uh, Cape Fear. He also put just a banana in the, in the pal- tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking it as you said that. That was of course <laughs> <Sorry. drink> drinking water. <laughs> so now they've got a track on him. They can work out where he is. Elena goes home. Dom's there. He right. grabs her and he takes the necklace from her. And she's like, "What? What? What do you want? Was it worth being caught for twenty dollars worth of silver?" Mm. So, I think you're the only person who ever understand why. Because they both lost someone, and yeah. they're fighting people. To try and make the world better. She's only heard bad things about him, but he's not as bad as she's been told. Yeah. Maybe nice. Dom's nice guy. Maybe maybe, maybe. Dom good guy. Mm-hmm. Maybe Dom good guy. Maybe Dom good guy. Is this where we get um we find out that Oh, is this where we get another shot of Christ the Redeemer? Yep. Yeah. Um do we is this the part where we find out that um Dwayne uh, that uh I keep forgetting it. Dwayne Johnson. What's his character's name again? Luke Hobbs. Of Luke Hobbs, Hobbs yeah. Open shot. Um, Decker shot, sorry. He's, he's on the other side of the city, right? No, no that's uh, high uh, We've got a bit of time. Uh, First off, okay. right, Hard almost makes it through the camera test and he goes, ah, the only way to beat it is inv- to beat the cameras is invisible cars. Right. And they immediately go grab some police cars. They're like, we don't have to do this. Yeah. And so Han, it's Roman, it's Brian, it's Dom. And they like, hey, we've got a quarter mile. Roman's going to bet a thousand, oh, right, thousand yeah. that he can beat everyone. Yeah, and, and so uh, here's a here's a fun street race, and we get well, those. They, we say, get these... they say, why not a million? But yeah, sure. <laughs> so it's too much. <laughs> but what I wanted to get to is uh, this is where we get to the part where we we've got the gear shift, we've got the pedal to the metal stuff we've seen before, right. and now here we have uh, four characters who are having these intercar chase conversation things where they're yelling at each other, mm-hmm. which now is like a full on staple of the franchise. This is where it really comes into fruition properly. Yeah. I mean, we've had a couple of bits, but this is really like, right, this is cementing what this franchise is. Because this is conflict-free, but it's just about them. Yeah. It's just it's just like uh, Justin saying, this is how the franchise is. Yeah. And Dom, Dom almost wins. Dom almost, almost. wins. And then what happens? <gasps> Brian. Brian wins. He finally wins. After all that time, and after the time that Dom pulled a pit maneuver on him to stop him from winning, <laughs> Brian finally wins. And then they get home. And what happens when they get home? Well, it turns out Brian didn't actually win. Roman tells him that uh, Dom put his hand on the brake. Yeah. Anyway, Mia's just... gone shopping at the market. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then she nearly gets kidnapped, right? Yep, Vince grabs her just before Reyes' yeah. gang come, come in. Yep. And uh, she takes her back to the HQ, 
and everyone's like Vince he's a weird guy and he's like I want to work for, I want to come back he's like there's always room for family no. oh so they have a barbecue of course they have a heist a free heist barbecue Leo free Burns heist barbecue. so Santos is like I want to get him cooking lessons with my 10 million that's what I do <laughs> Edge wants to open a garage Roman wants to be the fancy man he is a fancy man he, he is a fancy fancy. man yeah but then uh, Roman tries to give uh, Mia some beer. What happens? Oh, she says she can't. If, yeah, she's like, no, what, why? No, no, you have some beer. Oh, no, I can drink the beer. She can't. What? I think she's, she's pregnant. She's sick. She's still sick. <laughs> yeah, so uh-huh. everyone discovers she's pregnant. And it's like, right, our family got even bigger. And uh, what, does, uh, what does Dom say? It's a big old uh, toast. Oh, to family? Salute me, familia. All oh, right. Yeah, basically the same thing. Yeah, I know, but it's cool. <laughs> cool now. Right. Anyway, it's heist day. Everyone leaves because uh, Luke's uh, tracker is on the other side of the city. So it's me, Vince, Brian, and Dom. They're the last ones left in the uh, HQ whilst everyone's getting to places. Who's that? Who is it? Oh, it's a big armored truck that's going to crash some cars in and crash uh, them because right. Luke Hobbs and the gang here. Yep. Essentially here. Right. So, yeah, they, they thought Luke was uh, the other side of the city. Yeah, the tracker's on the other yeah. side of the city. But, yeah. uh, hey, you know what isn't? There's a gigantic armoured vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Smart move. And yeah. uh, so uh, everyone else is kind of, you know, put their hands up by guns. And Dom's like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think so. So uh, <laughs> Luke takes off his bulletproof shirt. And they just fight each other for a minute. They just threw three different walls. Yep. It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's a great fight. It's and then, uh, they th- then through a window, and then on the ground, they're fighting each other. And then Hobbs grabs a spanner. Yeah, he's gonna do the thing that uh, Dom bashed the guy's brains in. We know that. Yeah, one, past the furious years ago. Yeah, and so Hobbs is like, "I'm gonna do this to you now," and then he misses. Mm. And then Dom gets on top of him, and he's about to do it, and he lands it down on the ground himself. And everyone's yeah. like, Shh, "What happened?" Man, he, he he purposely missed. Yeah, he purposely missed. He didn't Just want to like kill. He purposely lost the race. What do you mean? No, no, no. Brian won. All oh, right, okay. It wasn't the baby present. All right, sure. Okay. So they get arrested instead, and they get sit in the armored convoy. So it's them, Hobbs, and I don't know through the rear streets. Right. And uh, oh, what's that in the franchise? Oh, it's a rocket launcher. Yep. Oh, it's a rocket course. launcher. Oh shit! <laughs> Cars explode. This is so ridiculous. Watch five men get massacred as uh, Hobbs just lays there. He's kind of crushed. And uh, Dom's pleading for Anna to just unhook him, even though he could just break through the chains. Yeah. We know he could just we you know, know, break We know through. this. We know this. But uh, then suddenly, just before Hobbs is shot, boom, Vince and Dom and Brian, and they're all just going rampaging with guns on all these people. Because they've decided he's family. They've decided for now he's family. Yeah. And then Vince gets shot. They manage to escape, but Vince gets shot. He tells him. He tells Dom that uh, he, his son, his son's Nico, short for Dominico. Dominico. Yep. Yeah. It doesn't sense. And then, then he dies. And uh, what does Dom say? Salute me, family. Got my eyes on Nico now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because he had his eyes on Mia. I got my eyes on you. <laughs> so everyone's all a bit like, "What can we do? If this, this, we've, we've lost someone." Yeah, family, <laughs> family. We finished the job. Yeah, they were, well, yeah. Everyone else is ready to to not carry on, and uh, and Dom says, "No, no, we're gonna finish the job." Do and it. They say, "Well, you know, look at your boy there; he's dead, yeah. but he's he's determined." But you know, look, the police are compromised. The station's packed like wall to wall bad guys. There's no way in. But don't worry, because now uh, Luke and Eleanor. Lena, uh, here, they, they're like, we'll help you. Aww. How do they get to do it? They're not going to sneak. We're not going to, we don't sneak. No, no. This is, this is going to go, they're going to go fast and they're going to go furious. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Smash through the parking lot. They don't care about the cameras anymore. Oh, yeah. They literally smash through the fucking wall. <laughs> they grapple, they hook up this fucking safe to two cars. And yep. here we go, we're just going to drive through it's, Rio. Yep, it's the Rio heist. It is the Rio heist. They're just like, right, here's two cars. 
It's going to drive this like it's uh, the Dukes of Hazard movie. Yep. It's so good. <laughs> they smash through buildings. They smash through places. One thing they do is the safe hits a tree, but it then it bounces off the tree. It doesn't take the tree down. <laughs> but don't worry, because if you think, right, well, that's good. The safe, the safe cares about the environment, right? Yeah. And a minute later, a bunch of cars start crashing into each other as they're chasing after and being hit by the safe. And yeah. one of the cars flies into a tree and knocks a fucking tree down. <laughs> Trees are killed by cops. A yeah. Yep. And they also uh, take out a bank. With a, I just love a, that a they full take, window bank. It's got no walls. Yeah. It's just pure glass. They take out a bank with a safe. Just genius writing. Do you, do you get it though? Yeah, do you get it. This is only three years after we had the financial crash, oh, and we're so already getting good. big shorted. Yeah. Well, no, it's two years before, isn't it? No, no I'm talking about writing in terms of. Uh, right. Writing. right. We're doing a reference to things. Right. right. They're being very clever. And how yes. they're relating to the modern day. <laughs> Roman and Han come in to help stop all these cops that are chasing them. Yeah. And Roman, oh, he is laughing. Because if you <laughs> remember the first time we met him, he was doing a destruction derby. And now he's back doing destruction derby. Oh, yeah. It yeah. all comes together. <laughs> At one point, uh, we see Brian as all these cops are getting hit by these safes. Just smiling <laughs> and laughing. He's kind of a psycho. <laughs> I think he's got like a, a yeah, thing with him. <laughs> But well, now uh, they've, they've got ten seconds. They've yeah, Mia says they've uh, they've got themselves a ten second window. Make it, make it, make it count. Count. That's it. Yeah. So, count to ten. So, so they uh, drive. They drive under a bridge, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers are singing. Yeah. And uh, then they get onto a bridge. They go under a bridge, and they go over a bridge. Mm-hmm. They're wombling free, and uh, <laughs> Reyes' guys are catching up to them. Dom Dom says, "You've got to go. You've got to look after Mia." Yes. Yeah. He, uh, he takes reins of the uh, sec. Pardon me, and then turns the car around and takes aim at everybody, smashing the safe into all these cars. <laughs> until, uh, until, um, until the safe. He he hooks the safe over. Yeah. Uh, two cars have gone in the water. Jumps out of the car. Yeah. And the car flies right into Reyes. Right into <laughs> Reyes himself. Like, there would be no survival in this if it wasn't any other franchise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, fact, he actually talk- decapitates a fucking van. <laughs> yeah. Like, straight up, if there were anyone in there, and there were, their heads <laughs> weren't there anymore. They're not any hurt, yeah. Well, there couldn't be only one. Ryan kills the other guy. He's turned around to save Dom. Yeah. Of course, and it's Dom's family. Dom's family, exactly. You don't give up on family. Yeah. And then Hobbs and Elena come and see them mm-hmm. after everything's over. Hobbs shoots Reyes. That's for my guys. Yeah, yeah. And then they look at each other. And like, I'll give you 24 hours. 24 hours. But you don't get the safe. Yeah. That's for us. And they immediately drive off. They're like, yeah, sure, cool. We didn't do it for the money. We brought the safe for you. I mean, what? Nothing. What? No, no. <laughs> and so Luke opens the safe and then <laughs> chuckles at himself. <laughs> and then we flash back that 10 second window. Oh, so good. It's great. Like Bradley it's said, it's genius. It's Amps. great. They yeah. drive up. There's a uh, garbage truck. They drive up to the garbage truck, and the safe goes up there. And Leo and Santos unhook them, and then hook up the next safe, which is on the front of this garbage truck, which is being driven by um, Giselle. Oh, uh, yep, Giselle. She's yep. in overalls to make sure she doesn't look suspicious, but she's also, yeah. you know, a world class supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's you know not subtle. <laughs> but yeah, they 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 bought a uh, safe for uh, Luke Hobbs to laugh at. Yeah, I mean, we already knew that they brought a safe to because they were trying to figure out how to open. Yeah, we it. knew like, we we, we yeah. knew this, but we knew uh, this. now we know that it's also now a gift. They've, yeah. they've gifted it. Yeah, to, uh, <laughs> to the DEA or whatever he is. Anyway, now the family's rich. Yep. So Nico and Rose they get a bit of money from Dom. Yep. Because he's got his eyes on them. <laughs> we go to Monaco. Indeed, we do. Leo and Santos, they're fighting over if they should put money on oh, red, yeah. put it all on black. So they just put, they put on... 10 million each on yeah. either one, and then the ball rolls, and we never see where it lands. Yeah. And the joke, of course, is we assume it's green. It's zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I figured, yeah. Because that's why they'll be back for the next one, right? Yeah. Hedge has a garage. He's finally got, he's got a new garage where he can do all of his custom stuff. 
Right. He's got the day job that Rowan was like, you don't need a day job. So Rowan pulls up, he's got a suit and a car. It's the oh, only... brown it's like... swanky new it's... car. And it's... Oh, it, it's, it's, one of, it's only one of four. It's the fastest car in the world. It's the only one in the Western Hemisphere. Yeah. He's got two ladies as well. No, he's only got one lady. Is it... Oh, no, right. He's got one lady. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And then Tej <laughs> is like, no, no, I'll drive my car. And then he put, then, then the two ladies pull up. Yep. Yeah, and it's the lady. other one. Now there's two on the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Their relationship is so fun. I, I, you know what? That's a brotherhood I really respect. I love that kind of. It's just fun. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah. So we get to see uh, Han and Giselle. Giselle's kind of lying on Han as they drive. Yeah. They pass yeah. aside saying Berlin, but they're going to Madrid. Yeah. But she Madrid. says, "I thought you wanted to go to Tokyo," and he yeah. says, "Not yet." Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> And then we see uh, Ray and, and Mia on the beach, relaxing. Yep, yep. And then Dom and, Dom and Elena turn up. Because why not? Why not? She's now family. Indeed. So and then uh, Mia and Elena are on the beach, hanging out on the beach. Talking about women's stuff. Yep. And um, Brian and, uh, and Dom decide to go for another little race. And no money, you know, no pinks, just, just for their own. Yep, just them. He wants mm-hmm. to know for sure. But we never find out. Fred, it's CG race. We don't really get to see. Yeah. And then what's that? Well, that's, what's that? that's the end. Credits. Credits means the end of the film. It's... Yeah, it would be in the end of the film. Yeah. Was, uh, the day we tested the Eva Mendes, Dwayne Johnson scene in Fast Five, the crowd's roar was unlike anything. Imagine when we heard Avengers Assemble during Endgame is what uh, yeah. David Ortiz wrote. What's that scene? What's that scene? What's that post-credits? or well, mid-credits. Is that, is that um, Hobbs holding... Yeah, sitting there, and, and there's Eva Mendes. Yeah, she comes in. He's like, uh, "There's this team of drivers in Berlin. Berlin. Well, that's where Hans just been, right?" Mm-hmm. Oh, ah, but it's not Dominic Toretto, so he's not interested. He's not he interested. Should yeah. He should be there. Yeah, you will be. Opens it up. Dun, Letty, dun, dun. baby. What? Letty Ortiz is in the his house again. <sighs> Can't wait for next week. I can't remember how she survived. The CEO, Adam Fulgerson, told me I could tell Vin he was right. Amnesia. Again, we quit from born, lol. <laughs> and that's the last of the David Ortiz segment. Right. Um, and that was Fast Five. That's Fast Five. That's how they turned the franchise around completely and got everyone on board. Yep. People loved this film. I remember seeing it at the uh, multimedia screening, and people were like, oh, these films aren't very good. I mean, we get free pizza and beer, but they're usually bad. And then I was like, no, this is going to be good. Don't worry, this one's going to be really good. And at the end of it, everyone was like, this is the fucking best. Why did you think this was going to be good? Because I thought adding Dwayne into the franchise seemed like this is like, oh, we know what this film, which franchise is now. It's not right. just street racing, it's proper action. It's a proper action stunt film. Okay, so you weren't completely put off by the fourth, like it didn't. It, I it, hadn't like... seen the fourth at that point. Ah, oh, right. Oh, right. I saw okay. the fourth when everyone else went to see Skyfall. I bought the fourth one for three quid on Blu-ray and right. flop and went home because I didn't get my, <laughs> I didn't get in. Ah, uh, and I watched it. I was like, "Yep, this isn't as good as the fifth one." Yeah. <laughs> no, this was the first one I ever saw. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I just knew. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'd seen the others in the lead up to this because I'm pedantic like that. that. Yeah. Whereas I knew this was a clean sweep in. Yeah. That was fair. Um, but yeah. Also, this was uh, what people said the loudest film they'd ever seen at that time. <laughs> Brilliant. But it was louder than even Batman fucking begins, which was hugely loud. Yeah. So, yeah, crazy. Crazy. We don't, we don't even end, we, we kind of end on a cliffhanger, but it's also like this could just be like comfortable as an ending. Mm. We know yeah. she's alive, and that's positive. There's hope. Yeah. What, yeah. what niceness! What a nice film. Niceness. I like family. this film. It's a, I like family. <laughs> so yeah, do you rank this as the best one so far? Oh, for sure. Cool. For sure, best one so far. <laughs> and I think best one of them all. But we'll see what. Like, yeah, look, we'll see. Us. We'll see what happens. We'll see who else joins our family to talk about other films as well. Maybe. Yep. We thank yep. you for joining us and being part of our family and driving and around. Driving. It's perfect. That's just, perfect. He, he got it. Yep. And he yeah, totally we about it. Ted Lasso, which is a show I enjoy. Yep. I've I've seen one or two episodes, I think, but I've, I need to carry on. I, I did love it. Good. Yep. 
Anywhere we can find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at movie underscore mad and uh, Instagram at movie underscore mad on uh, letterboxd at movie mad. Uh, how about you? I'm um, uh, on letterboxd at uh, letterboxd.com slash Ethan Runt. I'm also on Twitter at Ethan Runt. That's me. Yep. That's me. Um, we also have a podcast every Friday that's not this, which is uh, where we watch the TV show Nashville. Yep. And we're loving every second. Wildly bit. detailed fashion, like we did for Fast Five. You we break things down. It's called Backstage at the Bluebird. It's yep. every Friday, and uh, you can listen to it on this feed. And it's well worth it. And it's a good time. And it's fun. And uh, it's a good time. And uh, yeah, we're back on our bullshit on I Movie Mad main feed on Wednesdays, where we're going through Musical Month now. Musical Month, which means yes, we're uh, we're close to in the heights. Oh, so close! I can oh, taste I can, it. I can taste Viagra. Yep. Oh, I really want some Viagra. Um, until cool. next week, I suppose. Just for today, I got my name. <laughs> I'll have all the flavours. Well, next week. It's uh, Fast 6, is it? What's that referred to us? Furious 6. Is it Furious oh, 6? No, because no, Furious 7 was like the big change. Like, oh, now it's Furious. I think it was just Fast and Furious 6. Yeah, I think yeah, but I think I think it was just Fast Six in America or something. Like, they do something. Maybe it was F Six. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it was Fix. Fix. Maybe it was Quick Fix. Was it Quick Fix? <laughs> Can't get quicker than a Quick Fix fitter. I know that much. <laughs> I know this much is true. Anyway, we're back on our bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining our family. And until next week. Until next week. Enjoy Corona. Responsibly.